In this video, we're going to look at finding the volume of a solid using cylindrical shells. So we've got the region bounded by the curves y equals 4x minus x squared and y equals x. We're going to rotate this about the y-axis, and we're asked to do this by shells. All right, well, let's talk about why we wouldn't do this with, with shells rather than washers. All right, if we were going to do this with washers, remember, if I'm rotating around the y-axis, to get a washer, I would have to slice up the y-axis perpendicular to the y-axis. That means I'm going to integrate with respect to y. All right. However, notice that up here, I've got here's my left curve, here's my right curve, but down here, here's my left curve, here's my right curve. My right bounding curve changes over my integral. Interval, sorry. If your right bounding curve, one of your bounding curves changes somewhere in the middle, that means you're going to have to split your integral into pieces. So if you would wanted to do this by washers, you would have to use two integrals to do so. Okay? So it would be much easier in this case, well, at least it would be much more straightforward in this case, hopefully, to integrate with respect to x versus with respect to y, because I should be able to describe this in terms of one integral, because notice I have top bounding curve, and bottom bounding curve all the way through the integral interval all right but notice if i slice perpendicularly to the x-axis i'm parallel to my axis of rotation so i don't get a washer i get a cylindrical shell which is what this looks like now here's what your solid would look like when you rotate this about the y-axis i rotated it around so you can see the shell inside here with a top and a bottom it looks a little bit, it really looks like this picture here, right? When I took this and rotated around the y-axis, this is the same picture, it's just on its side. All right, so to give a little bit more insight of what the shell looks like, we're going to switch over to looking at GeoGebra, and I'm, so I can move the shell for you. All right, so here's our surface, rotated around the y-axis. Now, in this case, here's my, my red line is the x-axis, my green line is the y-axis. That's why it's on its side in this case. This is the way it just graphs it in three dimensions. All right, so here's my shell. Let me just move this shell around for you. You can see that as I get closer to the origin, my shell's getting smaller and smaller for my radius. As I get farther away from the origin, the radius gets smaller and smaller. But as I get closer to that outside edge, my height gets smaller. Okay, so here's what your shells look like as I move around from uh, smaller axes to bigger axes. Okay. Remember for shells, there's two things I need to know. If I think about taking this shell, cutting it right vertical, or right uh, along its edge this way, going from top circle to bottom circle, if you will, and laying it flat, you get a rectangle. So just like using our premise that we did back when we were doing cylindrical uh, or uh, circular disks or circular washers, I need area times the thickness, but the area I need is this lateral surface area, which is basically the area of a rectangle. The length, if you will, of the rectangle is the circumference of the circle, so I need 2 pi times its radius. The height is, of course, the height of this cylinder. Okay. So I need two pieces of information. I need to know a radius, I need to know a height to be able to figure out a volume of a cylinder. All right, so where does the cylinder get its radius from? Well, it always gets its ra radius from axis of rotation to the slice. Well, in this case, the axis of rotation is the y-axis, so your x-coordinate, wherever that happens to be, gives you the radius of your shell. So 2 pi times the radius, the radius in this case is just x. Where does the shell get its height? Well, the height is going to be coming from the difference between top and bottom curves for our region. So the height in this case, the top curve is 4x minus x squared, the bottom curve is x, so 4x squared, excuse me, 4x minus x squared minus x is the height of the shell. So that's where our integrand comes from, 2 pi x times 4x minus x squared minus an x. So it's 2 pi radius height thickness. That's how we're finding the volume. All right, so the last thing we need here are our limits of integration. We're integrating with respect to x, so we need x limits of integration. So the way to find these uh, points, x coordinates of these points of intersection would be to set the two functions equal to each other, 
and solve, and we'll get 0 and 3 for the solutions for those x coordinates. So our limits of integration here will be from 0 to 3. Uh, we can pull out the 2 pi. We can distribute the x through. After we simplify, we should get 3x squared minus x cubed for our integrand. Do an antiderivative. Plug in our endpoints using fundamental theorem calculus. And get a final volume of 27 pi over 2.